All right. Hey, everybody. This is Justin Berry with uh, Get Recruited. I'm joined by the one and only Ville Berry, uh, or in my English accent, William Berg, uh, at, sure. at uh, Purdue University. Uh, one of the most highly recruited uh, prospects coming out of Sweden two years ago and is now playing for what will be a top five team in the country. Um, Ville, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, we're kind of preseason is kind of starting to ramp down a little bit. So i um, happy about that. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we have our last 6 a.m. walkthrough. So, so, so. <laughs> happy about that and yeah. we're just kind of getting having our first scrimmage against a real team against Arkansas this <laughs> upcoming weekend so that's going to be super fun man they've that's been uh that's been a team that's been pretty uh, uh high profile lately and it's had a lot of a lot of dudes lately so that'll be cool for you guys to play against them that, that yeah, early. for sure and they even though I've they had like three draft picks last year or something like that. Yeah. Uh, they're still a crazy good team, uh, which just shows that they're also a great program. So it's going to be super fun playing them, especially since they also kind of don't play the style of basketball that the opponents we usually play. So it'll be a yeah. great learning experience for the whole team as well. Cool, man. Uh, fun, fun fact, man. A guy that was the, I guess you could say, the fourth guy. He started with those three draft picks you mentioned. A guy that I used to, uh, I played for a club I coached for in San Antonio. Actually, just got a two-way deal. So now, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, another, that's another, dope. yeah, another NBA guy for them. But uh, yeah. Um, well, yeah, man. How I, I know a lot of people in Sweden would be interested to know this. How how are you liking it out there? What's the uh, what's what's the environment like? And are, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah, so um, it's a great place to be for sure. Uh, I'm surrounded by great people, both coaching wise and players. Of course, I'm getting to learn from the national player of the year every single day in practice. So can't, yeah. couldn't ask for anything better there. Um, That's cool. And it kind of also puts things into perspective. Uh, you see how how much work they put in i see how much work i put in and like you really really when you surround yourself with people that are really passionate about sport and that really are going 100 percent all the time you see how much how much you progress yourself and how it almost becomes instinctual to just work on yourself at all times and doing everything i can to just become better which nice, is super man. cool i i think uh yeah i mean for a lot of the for a lot of the Europeans that would that might be viewing this and like younger players and stuff to put it in perspective uh Villa is playing uh not only at one of the top programs in America but um he is also practicing against like head to head every day against the reigning national player of the year Zach Eady and uh it's it's a uh, Villa is one of the one guys that I you're you're one of the one dudes that I that I feel short around and then you know Zach's yeah. even a little a, a little bigger, but that, that yeah. th to put it in perspective, uh, for anybody that's listening, that's a that's such a valuable thing. I think is that you know you could very easily have gone to any number of D ones and you know played right away and stuff, but where you're at is the best place in the country for bigs. And I mean, and <laughs> and, and you're you're you've been going up against uh, or not not even really arguably, but the best big in the country for the last. Uh, uh, season and a half so that's I, yeah. I'm I'm that's what I'm I'm when I know that I when I talk to people about you here in Sweden it's like man I, I don't know if you understand the level that that's there every single day um, at, at Purdue but um, and the crazy thing is it's not only like our team is stacked on every position we're yeah. so, that's the great thing like every single rep you're getting in practice is against somebody that's a great player yeah. Uh, when Zach steps off and takes a rest, I have Trey, Trey Rink Hoffman, which was the number one recruit out of Indiana in his uh, in his um, class. Yeah. And then I have Caleb First, who played with the U Team USA as well. So it's like it's just great dudes all around. You're always playing against talented and like 
hardworking in, individuals, uh, which is just, like you said, it's a, not only is the program great, but you're also surrounded by people. So like iron sharpens iron or whatever yeah. you say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, with the, you know, Coach Painter is one of the most respected minds in college basketball, especially on the offense, off, offensive side. Um, but I, what I've always enjoyed about Purdue is that the, you know, they, they do get some heavy hitters in there that are ranked players, but there's also guys that are just really good fits and exactly. that, that, that are maybe not a, as highly ranked and that are, you know, by American standards are a bit under the radar, but it's like, well, they're, they're, they're good enough for Purdue because they fit and they know how to play. Yeah. Um, he, he great. recruit, he recruits some personality a lot. Like he, searches for players that he knows will, like you say, fit into the to the role that he's searching for, but also players that he know will work hard and that are coachable. So like every single dude on the team, when Coach Paint says something, everybody listens. There's yeah. no talking back. There's you might ask a question like, oh, exactly what do you mean by this? But there's just never ever <clears throat> You never question what he says because you know that he's, like you said, one of the most respected and established coaches ever. Uh, so it's like, yeah, you just yeah. take it in and be grateful that you're able to learn from him. Yeah, man. I, I just, that's the, uh, that's anytime I think about you when I'm over here, it's, it's just like, man, that's a, uh, that's such a good situation. And the last time we spoke in person, I think it was uh, SM and Uppsala. And yeah. I think it, it, I remember that we spoke about, you know, kind of the process and, um, you know, that it's not a sprint. You know, I think some people really, really want to go to college and they're so set on, well, I got to play right away or I have to have this role right away. And I think, I mean, people have that attitude in, in anything. They have that attitude even before they get to college. <laughs> but um, I'm just, I, I've, I've been really happy just knowing that it, it seems like you're, you're trusting that process and that, you know, four, four years is a long time, five with the red shirt. And it's just like, that's yeah. uh, the, the development uh, for your position, especially is the, the, I don't know if there's a better place in the country that you could be. So yeah. Uh, not and taking things, like you said, not, it's not a marathon. Uh, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Like, especially last year, I noticed that uh, when I kind of got ahead of myself is when things started to, not go bad but like i got a dip in my performance so it's yeah. being just trust the process like the plan they have for me here is a good one and they they've seen me now for, for more than a year so they know they know how much i've developed in this year and they know what where to push and where to build and yeah what areas i need to focus on so i can remember um uh you know, shortly after the, the very first get recruited showcase, uh, I had just got home, uh, back to Texas and I got a call from, uh, a guy who's now I would call a friend, uh, and, and, uh, uh a colleague of sorts, uh, Brandon Goble called me. Yeah. I can remember a uh, shout out Brandon, by the way, uh, with Juco advocate does really, really good work. And, uh, he's one of the heavyweights in college basketball recruiting, but, uh, I, I can remember he called me specifically about you and he said, Hey man, uh, I've got a few on the line here, uh, schools wise, but I, you know, d what do you think? Like, can, like, how good is he? And, you know, I, I, I told him, told him my opinion. And he said, well, I think so too. And, um, uh, then, you know, in a, a few weeks as that went on, uh, you know, Brandon worked a little bit of magic and then people started to kind of, uh, uh, see you a little bit more. And it was like, Oh, shoot who is this who's this guy and yeah yeah with at that time i think it was like texas tech and purdue wasn't it yeah, yeah. and then utah state exactly utah state there were i've talked to boise for a while uh yeah. montana state was my first one yeah uh, if you play too, if, great... if you're a forward center though and purdue comes calling i mean that's that's a uh, yeah it's hard to say no yeah uh, especially when you they also we built a great relationship in the whole recruiting process. I talked to them almost every single day. Yeah. Uh, and like we were on the same page about everything. I knew what to expect from them, which just made the choice so much easier as well. Cool. And then Brandon, Brandon, like you said, shout out to him. He's a great guy. Uh, he really, he picked me up. I think my first, the first time he saw me or really 
reached out to me was when we won the Nordic Championship with the U18 team. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, and kind of, that's when the recruiting started to pick up back then. Uh, but he has, like, talked to me, and I feel like that that's such an important part about, like, everything with basketball, having a good relationship with pe- the people around you. Uh, yeah, since, I mean, yeah, that's... Interacting that's the, with everyone. Yeah, that's the coolest... Uh, I, I mean, one of the coolest things from... I mean, from my experience and almost everybody's experience, I guess, like if from on the playing side, the coaching side, um, the recruiting side, it's just the the relationships uh, matter and relationships are what what make it through. It's uh, over over all the other stuff. Um, For sure. So what uh, here's another another thing I'm curious about. And I think some other people are curious about, uh, especially uh, with so many so many more kids every year becoming uh, interested in going to college and playing in college. What, what's been, um, what's been your favorite moment uh, off the court, not favorite moment or, but what's your favorite experience off the court? What's your, what's your favorite thing about being over there that, uh, that you can think of? No, I know since like the community surrounding Purdue is mind blowing. Um, When I traveled here, coming back from sweden people at the airport were coming up to me talking and like do you need to ride back to west lafayette and like just to, i feel like that's the best thing for me especially somebody that's moving across the world to the yeah. u.s just having that community around around your school that i feel doesn't really exist in sweden yeah in the same way or europe in general like here everyone is like a diehard Purdue fan if you went to Purdue. Like it's yeah. you're just a one big one big family. Everybody looks out for each other and everybody tries to be nice and welcoming. And it's just for me that was one of the biggest surprises as well because like in Sweden nobody really gives um yeah, yeah. Like about like where you graduated from or where you're from yeah. really. So it's uh, <laughs> surprising for sure. Yeah, man. I, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly the type of answer I expected to get from you. Uh, I know for sure in this series of, uh, chats and interviews, I might hear from some other people that might say tailgates or football games or parties, <laughs> but, but, uh, which are all fun too. But I, I, uh, no, I can appreciate that answer because it, it just, uh, it's one of those things, I guess you can see videos of it. You can see, uh, you can hear people talk about it, but it's something that you don't fully get until you're in it uh, exactly it's uh but yeah it could, it's a it's a cool cool thing to have people that have your back that you've never met uh, for sure um what uh what would you say and i think you'll know what i mean by this like what what would you say was your welcome to college basketball moment so you're you're a you're a really uh i mean you're a mature you're a mature kid but we we talked a lot before you went over in the first place and when we were training in Stockholm, um, and I knew that you knew what you were getting into, so to speak, but there's still going to be that moment. What would you say it was for you? For sure. Uh, like, I feel like when you get to a certain point, you're always going to think that you're more ready than you are before yeah. coming over here. Yeah. Uh, just the speed, the pace, the physicality of everything. Uh, it's just different compared to back home. And you... It's like a whole, whole. It's gonna sound corny, but a whole new world opens up when you get over here and experience all that. And for me, I kind of that welcome to college thing was when, when we properly started playing, like uh, pick up and scrimmage my first year, my freshman year, that is, uh, and Zach really started to get going, and like I've been in the strength program for a while now uh, back then so i started to like lean up become more more burly more muscly and but we're still like i'm playing great defense but it didn't matter because yeah yeah Yeah. at the end of the day you can only do so much and it's at that point you kind of in the beginning it hits your confidence like a yeah man bomb and yeah. something something I battle with a lot and still battle a little bit with but it's you kind of have to keep in perspective and like see who like we're top we're ranked number three now uh, and it's like we're we're that high for a reason we have the people on the team to be that good so yeah. obviously even though you're playing great 
sometimes they're going to make a bucket. Sometimes everything is not going to go regarding according to your plans. So yeah. it's just that's that's a process. Yeah, that's a that's a good uh, that's a good soundbite there for a lot of like young players. I think is it's just like especially when you get to college, but even if you're, you know, a young guy or girl that's playing up on the men's or women's teams, um, even here in Sweden, it's just the, whenever you're the young one or whenever you're coming into a situation where there's more experienced players and where everybody's good, yeah. there's, there's, there's going to be some times uh, that where it just, it doesn't happen for you the way that you imagine it uh, all the time. But I can, I can relate because I remember, uh, uh well i wasn't i wasn't seven foot two which which would have helped but i uh i i can remember how physical it was my freshman year and i think the entire front court was uh you know 20 like 22 or older mm. like they were all you know all tra all transfers or all uh uh you know fifth year seniors and stuff like that and so i spent spent a lot of time uh get, you know getting up off the ground uh, in that first year it's just it, it's an adjustment that everybody has to make but that's that that's a good answer uh, yeah and even not even just in college like like you said the young kids i remember when i moved to lulu even uh i kind of had the same bump like like you say because you now you're playing against people that are older you than you more experienced yeah um not to the same extent that it was over here, but it was still a little bit of a bump. And I feel like that's a good thing as a player to kind of keep in mind that you might, in your hometown team, you might be the best player. But when you get recruited somewhere that's searching for great players, obviously there's going to be other great players there too. Yeah. So just adapting to that and like not realizing that you might not be able to do all the things that you did back home or in your previous place and kind of yeah. just pushing yourself to still be able to do that but also accepting that your coach recruited you to come to his team for a reason where that is playing defense or scoring or whatever it is just accept not accepting yeah. but embracing that role and yeah yeah well the, the just understanding like the concept of you you wouldn't be there if you weren't good and you, exactly. you wouldn't you would know people people wouldn't want you if you couldn't play uh so um but that brings me kind of to the, the next thing I, I wanted to ask is uh and i mean you can go as deep into this or not uh, as you want but what you know it's very easy for people to focus on you know not just with you, but with any, any, any players that are out there doing it, it's easy to focus on the positive thing. So it's like right now, like we've said it, like, you know, uh, start it, start it, you know, originally Scudu, Rig Lulio gets over. He's at, you know, top three, top three school in the country. It's super easy to focus on, on positive things. And I think that's what po people are drawn to, but what, what would you say along this whole, the whole journey thus far, what would you say has been your biggest challenge or your biggest your biggest hurdle that you had to get over? So last year, uh, right before March Madness started, uh, I finally felt like things were picking up. Uh, I was I was kind of in a slump before that. It didn't feel like I was making progress, even though I was. But it's kind of hard to see that from from the player's point of view uh but right as things started to pick up i started understanding stuff moving better playing better uh <clears throat> we had a pickup game the walk-ons me the other red shirt shirt guy camden high uh, and a couple of the coaches played uh pj who's a for pj who's a former purdue player uh yeah so we played pickup and i landed wrong on my foot messed it up and i had to I had a bunch of issues basically with it and the biggest hurdle was like because i was already preparing to going into that summer to play with a, a u20 team uh with i think that bobby played as well so i was yeah. super excited to play with him because i saw the season he was having uh and then that kind of just hit me in the face uh However, it was kind of a blessing in disguise since I've always had issues with my feet. They kind of went in there and cleaned everything up. Um, 
removed like eight bone spurs that I had in my ankle. Damn. Uh, yeah, so I, my foot now feels like a different, like a whole new body part, which yeah. is crazy. I can actually bend it now. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's 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 good. Yeah, and oh. ever since I got all that stuff fixed, like even though it was a bump, just realizing, oh yeah, damn, I won't be able to play. Uh, represent sweden or whatever yeah. uh, go home and play and stuff it was still it was a big bump but after that i kind of realized that oh yeah this is for better because now today i uh, i don't know how many month, months it is maybe four months after five months after surgery it's like <laughs> my body has never felt this great i nothing in my body is hurting like no injuries last year by this time i had twisted my ankles a bunch and stuff and it's like actually being healthy for extended period of time has been key to like me seeing so much progress both physically and basketball wise and it's kind of like i said it was a blessing in disguise but it was for sure the biggest hump it was a dark period like like every every basketball player knows that when you're dealing with injuries like that it's just it's tough yeah especially especially when you when when it was in the middle of of what you thought was a big jump and it's like well now 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 you can make that jump yeah um so well that i mean part of what you mentioned uh, brings me to my next one i know a ton of people uh here would be interested to know what are what are the chances that we see you in a in a Sweden jersey uh, in in the near future or in the future? Is that so, something you're interested in? Yeah. So the plan was to play with the U20 team this past summer, uh, but then that whole thing happened, so I wasn't able to. But I've always always enjoyed uh, representing Sweden, and I feel like it's something I wanted to. Uh, it's not up to me it's obviously of yeah. course up to the people uh, the coaches and their vision for the team and everything but uh, it's something i definitely if i have the possibility uh, we try my best to this past summer sack played for canada uh, yeah so and my coaching staff has like told me specifically that if i were to ask them to go and play uh, for Sweden, that they would do their best to fit it into my schedule. Well, that's Skipping that's good summer news. school or whatever. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good news for Swedish basketball, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, man. I think uh, in general, I mean, you're you're part of you're part of this, and I think the uh, there's a wave coming. I've been trying to convince people for a few years now. I think there's a uh, a wave of Swedish players uh, that are a, a lot different from from batches in the past it's not to say that there hasn't been any successful teams but i mean you guys with the under 20s and then the uh, the other under 18 group there's there's uh, a lot of talent coming out that's that's uh, you know per capita is pretty impressive for sweden yeah, uh, so for I, sure. I think, yeah i think the prospective team you guys could put on the floor uh, is super interesting um but yeah well i don't want to keep you forever man my my last uh, my last question I would just say if you if you could give any advice, uh, any any sort of short advice to to players that are from where you're from and they're trying to get where you're at, not necessarily Purdue, but to to the side of the world that you're on and in the in the college basketball scene, what would you uh, what would you say to them if you could? Uh, I would I have two things I would say, uh, especially being from Europe, it can be hard sometimes to get the looks that you deserve uh, which often can lead to you not that it's a bad thing but getting offers from UCOS or whatever and I feel like there's a lot of bad uh, prejudices or like uh, yeah around that and yeah. people hear that and they're like oh no but I my one of my best friends William Humer went to McCook and is now playing at San Jose um, like yeah. Yuko and even D2 or D3 can be a great way to like 
get over here and get the coaches to look at you because honestly most sometimes these college coaches can be a little bit lazy with the recruiting they don't want to stay, yeah. stay up to midnight and watch yeah. what you play against a bunch of 18 year olds in sweden yeah and another the second thing i would say is just when you get in those like bumps and like we talked about earlier is like you're you're where you're at for a reason to, like don't doubt yourself um uh, people recruited you to go and play for the team you're at because they saw the player you are, you are and they like trust you so you should trust yourself and like have faith in the player you are man that's that's solid advice man i i i really i uh I I love to hear the uh, both of those, but the first one especially just because um, there there seem what I'm tr- trying to fix, but it, it takes time. Is kind of these uh, stigmas where if you don't, if it's not a school, if it's a school's recruiting you, but it's not like a household name that you randomly heard about playing in March Madness, then there's kind of this uh, almost a negative connotation to that, and yeah. there there shouldn't be because whether it's where you're at or whether it's at a division one junior college, there's, there's players everywhere. And, uh, and I think it's slowly, but surely starting, people are starting to realize that. And uh, there's more and more Swedes going over, but that's, that's really, really good advice. Yeah, for sure. And especially like you, even though you might not be a household name and they haven't played in the tournament, like all the big, big teams have play smaller both D1 schools, but sometimes D2 schools even, or UCOs, which gives you the opportunity to showcase your skill set against high major, exactly. mid-major talent, which is also like a great opportunity. So, and just being in the US, there's just so much more resources being poured into the sports programs here that even if you're going to a UCO or a D2, you're probably getting 10 times more the attention and right uh, work in than you were if you were back home so yeah cool man well uh everyone that's uh that's listening this has been uh the very first ever get recruited alum chat with uh Ville Berry, uh former scudu former rig lulio current yep. current <laughs> purdue big man uh, shout out to all three and uh, Villa, I really I appreciate you joining me man this is this has been cool thank you and thank you for having me as your first as well I feel yeah. I feel honored <laughs> yeah man well um uh, well stay tuned uh guys there'll be uh, more get recruited alum uh, chats coming up soon and uh, good good luck this year Villa. thank you I appreciate it yeah